So now that we've talked about different kinds of molecular formulas, let's now talk about naming these simple chemical compounds. Compounds come in a couple of different kinds of groups. We have molecular compounds and ionic compounds. And it turns out the names of the ions sort of inside of a compound are going to give us a lot of power and tell us a lot about the names of the compound. So for example, or in review, we need to go back and remember the way we name ions. So for the group 1A elements and the group 2A elements, silver, zinc, and aluminum are all predictable charges. And every other metal needs a Roman numeral. How we name that, so for sodium, we don't have to say sodium 1 ion, we just say sodium ion, because sodium can only have a plus 1 charge. It's group 1 in a metal. I don't have to talk about a silver 1 ion, I could just say silver ion. But copper as a plus 1 ion, because it's not one of these ones that's always the same, we have to specify which flavor of copper. So if we're talking about a copper plus 1 ion, we actually say copper 1 ion. This is a Roman numeral in parentheses, but it, the way it's said is copper ion. And if you'll call anions, generally have the, the ending of the atom name sort of corrupted and turned into IDE. So a, a fluorine atom, when it becomes an anion, we change the INE to IDE. Oxygen, when it's a minus two anion, we drop the Ygen and turn it into Ide. So anions and into Ide, cations are the name of the element followed by the word ion and sometimes with the charge, depending on who it is. Two different kinds of compounds, two broad categories of compounds we have to talk about because the naming of those, the naming of the compounds is a function of which one of these categories falls under. The first group of compounds are what are known as molecular compounds, which is composed completely of non-metals. So everybody to the right of the stair step. So nitrogen and oxygen, or carbon and fluorine, or carbon and chlorine. Those are all molecular compounds. And the smallest unit of them is actual molecule. And the reason why these are called molecular compounds is if I go in and I look at the atomic level of these compounds, I will actually see individual molecules and say, oh, yes. So for example, if I were to look, you know, water is another example of a molecular compound. If I were to go in and look at the molecular level, atomic level, the water molecule, I could actually see, oh, there's an oxygen and there's the two hydrogens bound to that oxygen. It's one grouping. Whereas an ionic compound is completely different. An ionic compound is a species that contains a cation and an anion. There is no sharing of electrons between them. The electrons have gone from the species that became the cation and essentially lost its electrons. So I have a positive ion next to a minus ion. And the thing that's keeping that positive cation next to that minus anion is, is that charge differential. And the smallest unit for an ion compound is what's known as a formula unit. And here's sort of the reason why. So here is a sort of a blown up picture of a sodium chloride, what it actually looks like at the atomic level. So the sodium ions represent, you know, the yellow spheres and the chlorines are the big green spheres. And you'll notice that's not a one-to-one -one ratio. We, know, we talk about, you know, the compound is sodium chloride, but what you need to understand is that we don't have molecules of sodium chloride where if we go and look at the atomic level, we have one sodium next to one chlorine. This is what it actually looks like. Here I have a chlorine that's got sodium ions sort of all over it. And there's a sodium ion with chlorine ions all around it. So it's not a one-to-one -one and say, oh yes, this one is actually tied with this one. It's not. It's actually, it's a big matrix. But, so we talk about sodium chloride and the, the, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every one sodium ion, there's one chloride ion, but they're not together. Unlike in molecular compounds where we can distinguish them. So that's a big difference between those two groups of compounds, or that is the difference. So naming these compounds is a function of which group it falls under, molecular or ionic. Molecular compounds, which is the first group we're going to talk about, binary molecular compounds. So molecular compounds, some contain two non-metals. Binary meaning two different elements. 
sort of the generic formula for naming binary molecular compounds is the, it's a, it's a, it's a two-word phrase. So you have the first atom in your molecular formula with a prefix in front of it. That's the first word. And then the second word is the name of the second atom in the formula with a prefix in front of it with a polluted IDE on the end. Helps a lot if you understand, if we look at examples. And the prefix essentially tells us exactly how many of that element are in the formula. All right, so naming bi binary molecular compounds is actually, I think, by far the easiest of all the naming conventions because all you have to do is be able to read the word, read the letters. So we look at this and we say, okay, there's a nitrogen and there's an oxygen. So the first element is nitrogen. So the first word or the atom name is nitrogen. The prefix is how many are in there. There's two nitrogens. So its prefix is di. So the first word is di-nitrogen. The second atom, it's oxygen. There's only one oxygen. So its prefix is mono. And then we, the whole thing ends in IDE. So this would be di-nitrogen monoxide. Now, notice there is this little restriction, and don't ask me why it is. I, I didn't come up with these rules. We never put a mono on the first atom. So if the first atom in the formula, if there's only one of them, we, 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 don't, we leave the mono there. Or don't, we don't put a mono on. So here's compound. We, it's made up of sulfur and fluorine. The first atom is sulfur. So our atom, our first part is sulfur. Since there's only one of them, we don't put a mono in front of it. So the first word of this molecule's name is simply sulfur. There are six fluorines. The prefix for uh, six is hexa. And we add the IDE. So this is sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur hexafluoride. And here are three more relatively simple examples, which you should be able to work through relatively quickly just using, this is sort of your cheat sheet. One boron, three chlorines, one carbon, two oxygens, two hydrogens, one water. No, this is not called water. That's the common name. We want, I wanna know what is the actual, following the strict rules, what's the name of that compound? Ionic compounds are just a little bit different. It's still sort of pieces and parts, but it's written in a, it's got a, it's sort of a different convention. It's actually easier because we don't have mono, di, tri, tetra, and all those kinds of things. It's really just the name of the cation followed by the name of the anion. It's really just that simple. So calcium bromide, calcium bromide. Given the name, how do we figure out what the compound is? Well, we know that calcium is a plus two, and we know that bromine is a minus one. So the only way we can get it such that we have a neutral compound, because the total charge has to be zero for our ionic compounds. So the ratio must be two to one because calcium is always a plus two, always a plus two. Bromine is always a minus one, or bromide is minus one. So the formula is CaBr2. Aluminum oxide. Well, we know that aluminum is plus three always, and we know that oxide is means it's a minus two ion. So the lowest whole number ratio to combine all those, the least common multiple of three and two is six. So the total charge of the positive and that negative has to be six. So we need two aluminums and three oxygens. That gives us our neutral species. Naming something that contains one of those ions that can change its charge. So here we have iron and chlorine. We can't call this iron chloride because iron does not have a predictable charge. Iron is one of those elements that can have different oxidation states. So in this case, we have to, the, the charge on this iron is plus three. And the reason we know that is because chlorine each chlorine has a minus one charge and there's three of them. So the one iron must have a plus three charge. So this is iron three chloride. But again, there's the name of the cation, just an iron three ion. And there's the name of the anion, chloride. So notice there is no prefix. There is no prefixes when we're naming ionic compounds. So there's no mono, there's no di, there's no tri, there's no none of that. There's no 
None of that.